Look at the moon high over Jerusalem at the early hours of the morning. Welcome to Jerusalem Sunrise Stroll Chat and Share this morning. Still here in Jerusalem, enjoying just, I love the walls of Jerusalem. You know, these limestone walls, about 500 years old, built by Suleiman the Magnificent in his effort to defend Jerusalem against a threat from Charles V. And this actually got the Franciscans kicked out of Mount Zion, where we are right now, getting close to the Zion Gate. And this is the Armenian convent, very interesting place. And there you can see the Dormition Basilica behind the rails. And I was actually here for the burial of the Armenian Patriarch of Jerusalem a few years ago. He had suffered a lot in his final years. May the Lord have him in his mercy forever in his glory. So here we have the Zion Gate. Look at these old windows for defense. And the doves, the pigeons here in Jerusalem. This is the Zion Gate, but we'll go in later because our objective is the sunrise. So here we have a map of the old city. You know, there's the Temple Mount. And where I started this morning is Notre Dame. And it's outside the new gate of the old city. So just about here, it's called the French compound, a secular way of saying it. And then I came all around here, outside the walls, and we just, I were together here now, and past the Jaffa Gate, and then around here to the Zion Gate. So we're here at Mount Zion, where the Last Supper is remembered and David's tomb is remembered since the Crusader period and it's a high point of Jerusalem so it's um, I'm just thinking of the best place to capture the sunrise imagine little cars in here in the streets of Jerusalem and here we have the Chinacolino in front of us this little gate and the Franciscans purchased a bakery here in the 1930s and built this church because it was not possible for Christians to celebrate inside the upper room. And it brought the Franciscans back residentially here to Mount Zion. And here we have the Dormition Church, but let's see how the sun is doing. Maybe we can go in there and have a little tour first. I think that's a wise idea, actually. Here we can see the Tower and the Mount of Olives, the Tower of the Ascension. And let's go right now uh, in here and check this out because the sun is still a little ways to go before it rises. So here we have the Basilica of the, uh, the Dormition of Our Lady, which is the passing of Our Lady from this life. It's a, a wonderful uh, building and in the crypt there's memory of all the great women of the Hebrew scriptures and then Mary is in the center sleeping in the Lord and therefore the word Dormition and then over here is the upper room for the Last Supper for the first appearance on Easter Sunday of the risen Lord and for Pentecost the coming of the Holy Spirit. So it's a place where we remember a tremendous, a wonderful load of Christian memory. So normally we would go in here to get to the upper room and up these stairs. Actually, it gives me an idea. Maybe we're going to lose connection for a minute I'm not sure about that. Well, actually, maybe I should try back here. Let me try back here because the door to the upper room is almost for certain closed. It's just up there at the next level. It was the upper room, right? This is actually a Crusader period building to commemorate 
the Last Supper, the washing of the feet, the Eucharist, the gift of the priesthood. And the Jewish people are in here praying this morning at David's tomb. And this is a memory of the tomb because from the Bible we know that David was buried in Mount Zion. Oh, sorry, not in Mount Zion, in, um, in the hill across at the Mount of Olives. So we're going up this back stairs here. Let me see if we do this little maneuver here. I wonder if we can go through here. Maybe we can go up here. Let me see. Let's go up the stairs here. This is the exit door from the last supper room, so that would be right in here. Are you hope you're with me still. Hope it's not too much for you to climb all these stairs this quickly. And here we see the towers of the Mission Church, which we see from Notre Dame. And you see from everywhere because it stands over Jerusalem. It's the tower of the Abbey, the Benedictine Abbey. Perfect spot for sunrise. Wow. Wow. Perfect spot. Wonderful view here. Could it be better? Look where we are. And we got our birds again. Wow, lots of them. Wow. Wow, and there's all the pigeons here. Different birds and the moon is right above us. Come on moon, show your face. There we are. And here we're two floors up now above the level and here we see we're going to be here for sunrise. Isn't that lovely? Thank you for joining me on this beautiful stroll this morning. I'm trying to pick my nice spot here. So we're looking across at the Jewish burials on the Mount of Olives. And this is also a cemetery here. Looks like an Arabic writing on one of the stones. If maybe I'm wrong. I need to check this more closely. Or maybe it's Armenian writing. We have to check that later. Sorry for my ignorance. And actually just over behind the trees is the Christian burial ground on the other side of the road. And that's where that famous uh, German man uh, Oh, morning memory, help me here. Um, he saved the lives of, I think, about 1,200 Jewish people during the Holocaust in, in Europe. L Schindler, Schindler, Schindler's List, right? And um, this could be our spot here now. This is a very good spot. We just have this dome behind us here. So we're in a perfect spot here. We have the best angle, about 270 degree scope around so there we are so we're going to see the sunrise this morning god willing right here over the mount of olives and we're looking at the hills of moab in jordan that's that dark level behind the cypress trees here let me open it up for you and that's, those are the mountains of Moab in Jordan, present-day Jordan, all along there, all along here. And between them and us, just this side of those mountains, is the Dead Sea. So it's about, if you have no traffic on a, on a Saturday on a Shabbat, you can be down there in 20-25 minutes from, Jer from Notre Dame in Jerusalem. And then across the sea you already have those hills, and that's where Moses... Oh, there's the sun! There's the sun, people. Good morning. Welcome to Sunrise Stroll and Chat and Share here at the Sea of Galilee. Oh, by the way, and Share, yesterday so many people shared. 
and I didn't see the count this morning but last night last evening it had gone over 3,000 viewings of the uh, sunrise stroll and chat yesterday morning and I just need to thank you because you're the ones that make that happen not me I do the filming but you do the sharing so uh, you you did a great job sharing that yesterday and it really reached a lot of people and you brought a joy to so many people the comments were so beautiful so rewarding to see that so many people's hearts are deeply touched so I encourage you to do that again today and let me put in a word for the youtubers who see it afterwards when I load it up on YouTube uh, if you subscribe to the YouTube you should get announcements about it and encourage others to do that because the number is growing slowly and I'm very impressed with that and uh, didn't really make any push for that but all of you people who are have friends who don't use Facebook recommend the YouTube to them and then they can uh, enjoy the YouTube experience uh, through, uh, the same experience through the YouTube they don't see all the comments that you see and share because that doesn't I don't think that transfers over it's just the video transfers over so on the Facebook you have the chat of the uh, the live stream and in the YouTube they hear what we're saying now so they know it's a live chat but on the other hand they're um, they're deprived of all of the beautiful comments that you are all making but still it's a very good experience for people to see it so I think I see a little wedding being prepared down here you see the the hoopa here it looks like that's what it is see that white little cover where the bride would stand would come in to meet her husband who'll be standing there with the rabbi and his parents and family so somebody's getting married So here we are uh, overlooking uh, Mount Zion. For, sorry, over, from Mount Zion overlooking uh, Jerusalem. We can't see too much detail again because of the light, but I think this is a nice angle to be at. And maybe what we can do is we can go down again and continue walking and you can see some more spots that you know very well. So welcome everybody to Sunrise Stroll and Chat here at, I was going to see here at the Sea of Galilee. No, 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 no. We're in Jerusalem this morning in the holy city of Jerusalem, praying for the peace of Jerusalem. We see the sun hitting here, hitting these beautiful limestone covered buildings that are Mission Church and the tower of the monastery, the monastery structures here. The Benedictines are here for well over a hundred years uh, and it's a great center of encounter of, of uh, also between Jews and Christians and Muslims and you see we're close to East Jerusalem is right down under our nose here and all of the Arab population the city of David is down there so let's look at what the scriptures are saying this morning in our daily readings So yesterday we had special readings because of the feast of St. Lawrence. I called him Larry yesterday morning. Thank God nobody was upset with me. But um, I'm sure his friends called him probably Larry. Well, he wasn't American, so maybe he wasn't called Larry. But um, that was a special reading because of his martyrdom, which is so celebrated. But yesterday we started reading in the normal course of events the book of Ezekiel. So today we're in the second day of Ezekiel. And let me get you the quotation. I already posted the link there. It's Ezekiel chapter 2 and actually going into the beginning of chapter 3. So the Lord God said to me, As for you, son of man, obey me when I speak to you. Wow. <laughs> this is the language of a dad with his child, right? And be not rebellious like this house of rebellion. Wow. So there's a big contrast being set up. So the person who speaks for God needs to be one who is living with God, living in God. Let us pray for all those who speak of God and who want to speak about God and who think they're speaking about God, to really want to be in his friendship, bonded with him, deeply bonded with him. As for you, son of man, obey me when I speak to you. 
be not rebellious like this house of rebellion but open your mouth and eat what I shall give you hmm it was then I saw a hand stretched out to me in which was a written scroll which you enrolled before me it was covered with writing front and back and written on it was lamentation and wailing and woe Wow and now he's going to eat this he said to me son of man eat what is before you eat this scroll then go and speak to the house of Israel It's interesting that the thought just crossed my mind of Jesus up at, at um, present day Annapolis at Sichem at Jacob's well and the disciples came back with food and they said have something to eat and he said my food is to do the will of him who sent me. Man does not live on bread alone but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. I'll just try to get those birds for you there. Man lives on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And here we have Ezekiel eating the scroll of the word of God. And it's a scroll that's not comfortable. Lamentation, woe. Lamentation and woe. And wailing. It's for our times, you know. He said to me, Son of man, eat what is before you. Feed your belly and fill your stomach. I ate it, and it was as sweet as honey in my mouth. He said, Son of man, go now to the house of Israel and speak my words to them. And it's not going to be easy. You know, the prophets were not accepted. It was very difficult. It's not easy to be a prophet. To sp a prophet doesn't mean telling the future. It means... It can include that, but it's primarily speaking for somebody else, like spokesperson. That's the literal meaning of the word prophet. And to speak for God to people who have turned from God, who have become very secularized, very alienated, very even hostile. You know, we have this experience today of people who have this very strong anti-God belief, uh, atheist, militant atheism, you know, and this ideologies. Uh, here we're getting the birds again. So how much we need to be filled with God's word. And then that God's word is sweet to us. And that's a whole process of life transformation. Because we all have a streak of autonomy and selectivity and we actually don't listen to some of God's words. How often that happens to us. In the distance I hear the bells of St. Saviour's Church. I doubt you could hear them, they're faint at this point here, at this distance. So the psalm is Psalm 119. It's a very long psalm, a very special psalm. And we're at verse 103 for the response. How sweet to my taste is your promise. In the way of your decrees I rejoice, as much as in all riches. You know, how people rejoice if they got a present of a gold watch, or a Mercedes, or a Jaguar. Or how people would rejoice. You see the smile on their face, new clothes. In the way of your decrees I rejoice, as much as in all riches. That means all the clothes, all the cars, all the money, all the stock options, all everything, all the real estate. 
In the way of your decrees I rejoice, as much as in all riches. Yes, your decrees are my delight, they are my counsellors. So God's word is not just something interesting to read, culturally enriching, but it's actually giving me counsel how to live. How sweet to your taste is my promise. Your decrees are my inheritance forever, the joy of my heart they are. What a grace it is to enter into this communion with God, into this connection with Him. into this union with him. When we hear the words of, of Jesus, uh, again we have that interior challenge uh, with that extraordinary fulfillment. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. You know, your decrees are sweet, there's a, a wonderful sweetness in people who are meek and humble. And people who are arrogant and proud are not an easy bunch <laughs> to deal with. And we probably all have pieces of that, you know. And we all can also be meek with some people and we can be harsh on other people. And we can be welcome company to some people, and we can be resisted by others. Let's walk a little bit. I think we've seen the sunrise over Mount of Olives right now, and so you can get a, a, since I'm not very often in Jerusalem, let's get a little taste, let's see if the connection holds up. I'm not sure how much time we have. Um, I think I started about seven minutes to six. So we still have a couple of minutes, not much. Let's, let's see how we deal with this. There's the King David Hotel in the middle there. A famous place. Things are turned around from a different angle as we watch the order of the places. This hill over here is the Hill of Evil Council. It has that name since at least Byzantine times. And then uh, we're actually sitting right over the Gehenna Valley. It's right out behind these trees here. That's the yeshiva, and I just heard their voices as they were praying, but they went silent. So just so you have a little taste of that, those good pious Jewish people praying in the early morning here at Mount Zion. This is all a Crusader building, 800 years old, maybe a little bit more than that, going on 900. Maybe you hear the prayer there again. Typical courtyard from those ancient times.
It's amazing the diversity in Jerusalem living together. It's such intense diversity packed into such small space. And little flowers as well. So here we are coming back then out of this area of Mount Zion onto the gateway. Let's see how far we can can make it for you. I know many of you are longing to be back and many of you want to come again and come for the first time. So I think we'll swing this way here. Not sure if we'll get inside the gate. Let's see. I don't know if my camera caught that lady walking her dog. So that happens in Jerusalem as well. There's a very nice spot here with the grasses in the sunlight. And then you have this cactus here. All the surprises when you come to Jerusalem to see all the different vegetation and plant. Don't put your hand too close there, you can get hurt yourself with the thorns. So thank you very much for joining us this morning. If we read these signs symbolically it means I shouldn't enter here. And here we see now Jerusalem. I could imagine that they're heading for the western wall which would be in here and down to the right. This is a, a medieval gate. We'll do this another time people. God bless you and pray for us, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, pray for justice in Jerusalem, for harmony, for blessings for everybody. Psalm 87 says we were all born here. God bless you, see you later.